decided to drive thousands of miles to climb a pitch called Blood on the Crack. Oh, dear. <laughs> I guess we're uh, getting what we asked and for. here we are. <laughs> uh. So before this trip, I knew very little about Kevin. I knew that he'd climbed the Dawn Wall. I was just worried about being able to keep up. Basically, we met through Instagram. <laughs> I posted a picture of this route, and he comments, he's like, oh, I was going to go up there this season, too. Like, we should team up. I was like, yeah. We're here to try the Tom Egan Memorial route. The free climb was put up in 2015 by Will Stanhope and Matt Siegel. I think it took them four years. And no one's ever done it since. What makes this route famous is its head wall. It's split like lightning struck it with a perfect finger crack. It's outrageous. It's so splitter and it's so blank everywhere else around it. It's got to be one of the best cracks in the world. When we first arrived, our task was just get the rope up the wall so we could check out all of the hard climbing up there. <laughs> Which one? Which one? The rock climbing. And the bugaboos. There's snow on the ground and shit. <laughs> Freeing hard, big wall routes is a lot of times early on more work than climbing. And then as you get further along into the process, it obviously becomes more climbing than work. I find all the holds, sorry, dude. This hold is really bad. And then from there, it's just kind of like top rope hero, kind of working out moves. Boom, 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 boom. You get to the point where you know every single hand and foot move um, for the entire pitch, and it's kind of like a dance sequence. It was a bit of a blind date. Climbing is cool like that. I mean, people are meeting partners in the camp here the same way. Just be like, yeah, let's go climbing. Huh. Two, three, four. Huh. Yeah, it was a bit of a gamble, really. It definitely could have gone badly wrong. But uh, as it turns out, I think we kind of bounce off each other. It's rare to find a partner that wants to suffer on the same objective as you. Oh, dude. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> 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 Tape and super good. Over the past few years, I've made a lot of effort to climb with people that are better than me. So this trip was a really, really sweet opportunity to climb with Kevin, because he's obviously one of the best big wall free climbers in the world. The best way to improve is to get on stuff that you can't do, or stuff that's too hard. It's so fun being like right on the edge of falling off. A lot of that climb, you just have your very, very tips of your fingers in the crack. You know, it's like putting them in a car door and just like, ah, slamming them on there. I love that stuff. Yeah, come on. Oh, woo, woo. I think in life, if you don't ask people things, then they don't happen. It's the same with like asking for jobs and stuff. Oh, that was so fun. I'm definitely really, really keen to come back and have a go at it next year. This is Niagara Falls. Everybody in the world knows about this waterfall. It's the largest waterfall in the world. Six million cubic feet of water a second ripping off the edge. It's real. This is the first time in history that anybody's ever had a permit to go ice climbing here. A large, potentially record-breaking storm has shut down large parts of the northeast coast from New York to Boston. Temperatures will barely reach 20 degrees as a high with a wind chill factor in the single digits. An Arctic outflow warning remains in effect for the region as temperatures will continue to drop. I haven't fallen off in 30 years of ice climbing on lead, and today I'd like to keep that streak alive. I'd like to get one more day where I don't fall off. <laughs> I'll be honest, I got butterflies. I'm ready. Something will happen here. The ice here is just more difficult than most waterfall ice I climb by a pretty good margin. 
It's never going to freeze totally, and I'm climbing ice that's formed both by the falling water and the spray from that water. A lot of water flying around here and it builds up and then it breaks. Nothing looks the same day to day or, or week to week here at all. <laughs> what a cool place! There was no guarantee that this would work. I'm an ice climber, you know, that's what I do. I travel all over the world and I climb frozen waterfalls. And I just climbed the absolute biggest, burliest, coolest one in the whole world, Niagara Falls. It's hard to compare it to anything visually. It's more like out of a, of a fantasy world. Um, fiction novel. It takes uh, a couple of flights to a small village called Beliagara, and from there it takes an about eight hour ride downstream the Indigirka River, and then another three days of hardcore hiking. You know, we, we had seen the pictures of Sergei, we saw pictures of towers and, and thought there might be possible climbs. But after a whole day on the boat, two days of like heinous hiking, um, there is a moment where you, where you start doubting things. And then when you finally crest up the hill and, and see the first towers, that's a big reward for all the, uh, the effort you've taken. Having daylight all day long poses a great possibility because you can just climb the whole time and, and, and pick, pick your climbs whenever you want. But it has also like a certain danger because you lose track of time. You forget to eat, you forget to sleep, you, you become really tired and that also poses a risk for the climbs you do. The most interesting aspect was that we had a lot of ideas and imaginations about this place and we got the actual chance to compare imagination with reality and that's always a really nice process. The climb is one of the hardest multi-pitches in the world and by far the hardest multi-pitch in Sardinia alone. The first pitch is not easy at all. It's a hard 8B that's very much Danny Andrada style, which is conducive to big, long moves in between massive tufas where you're facing scary falls. For some reason, my mind kept going back to this sphere of, this is too hard for me, this is too hard for me. 
it all feels so hard and above my level and out of my comfort zone. Tomorrow we'll try more, maybe spend less time hanging. We'll see if it's possible. The weather was for the first time slightly cooler than it had been. I was nervous because I knew that we had a small window. We got an early start and we were like, game on, let's go. After six pitches, about to go to the last pitch. Last pitch. Sport climbing is an obsession. It demands somewhat effort. Why do we do this? Why do we invest like months, sometimes years? I grew up in São José do Rio Preto. It's this small city, like four or five hours away from Sao Paulo. I went to this recreational center one day with my brother. I was 10. I saw this little climbing wall there, tried it, and never really stopped ever since. Part of the reason that Felipe's story is so impressive to me is that he made a really elite level of performance rock climbing happen with way fewer resources than most people. I think it's safe to say that El Bon Combat is one of the hardest routes in the world. There isn't a single easy move on the route. He made a really elite level. I first heard of El Bon Combat a few years ago. This route, grade 8, 9B from Chris Sharma. When Chris proposed that grade, that would have made it the third hardest route in the world. Oh! Right when I got here, uh, I felt like the, the simulators that I set at the gym helped a lot for uh, the two top cruxes. Like I felt really good on those moves since day one. So I feel like it's just a little bit of muscle memory from what I was doing in the gym already. Look at the secret. Keep yourself stoked. Another try. Everything you got, come on! You got this. Come on. Come on. Yes, dude. Come on, it's yours. Come on. Yeah, dude.
Why do we do this? I guess it's this unknown challenge. <laughs>